Welcome to Quest for the Unknown, the Paranormal Network's premier talk show about all things paranormal, uh, hosted by myself and Peter Rand, two paranormal investigators. And uh, Peter, we've got an interesting guest joining us this week. Yes, we do. This week we have Charles Lamaru, a uh, seasoned UAP enthusiast. Welcome to the show, Charles. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Charles, I guess the, the, the most obvious question to begin with is why are you interested in UAPs, also known as UFOs? What, what started all this for you? Well, uh, it's been about, I'd say, almost 11 to 12 years now. Um, prior to this, I was a complete skeptic. Um, you know, I love science fiction, uh, UFOs, aliens, all that stuff I thought was just, you know, science fiction and entertaining. Uh, but about 11, 12 years ago, I was really big into astronomy. I had a telescope set up here in Vancouver um, overlooking uh, the moon, and I was getting into astrophotography, and I saw an object go past the moon. It wasn't drifting. It was an object. In, it was a UFO. That got me into doing a lot of in investigations uh, on the Internet, talking to people, and I started some, you know, well, what did I see? So that really launched me into what I do today. I'm totally intrigued about this field. I mean, obviously, being a paranormal investigator for 27 years myself, I've never kind of delved into, you know, that kind of realm of the paranormal. Um, so what kind, of, what kind of encounters have you had over the years? Quite a few, actually. Um, I started off with, um, you know, looking at those guys, no more telescopes. Now I have night vision monoculars. Yeah. And I lived um, in Yelltown on the 21st floor uh, of my building. And so, of course, it's a whole learning, um, it's, a, it's a whole different learning curve from telescopes, binoculars, you're looking now in infrared spectrum. And so, of course, I got, and I, I didn't have a tripod for my binocular, but I had a little screen, a five inch screen, and I was scanning the skies and I thought, oh my God, look at all the UFOs. And actually there were satellites, there were bugs, uh, bats, and it's, it's, it's a real beginner's um, mistake, misidentifying all these objects. So that was my first thing that was seen. Then I started seeing bright spheres that are large, size of big beach balls that were just uh, uh, ascending from uh, the Gravel Street Bridge or further out by um, uh, English, English Bay, if you know Vancouver quite well. There weren't Chinese lanterns, there weren't balloons or LED balloons or anything like that. These were objects that were just staying up in the sky and just hovering because the majority of my sightings were actually because I watched the skies quite often um, were without having cameras around. You do this a lot in the city, which you don't hear about. Do you ever go out of the city to look? Uh, yes. like, oh, absolutely. And absolutely. What, what, what's the difference to say between what you see in the city, like those kind of UAPs and then what you might find out in the woods? Are they similar or different? Just going outside, going to Squamish um, or just going up to Cypress Mountain, getting away from all the light pollution. You would see similar objects, but they were, um, they were camouflaging themselves a lot more. They were really translucent, but you can still pick them up with night vision. So they're, they, it almost seems like they, they know that you're there, especially if you have a whole bunch of camera gear. And if they're there and they're, they're showing themselves very bright, zipping by, it's a big bright light and you leave a long trail and it blinks out at the same time, they want you to see it. Because a lot of times they are very, very translucent looking. And these are spheres. These are not nuts and bolts. Um, unidentified aerial phenomena. These are light spheres, and they, they, they can be the size of a golf ball to the size of a, a, of a small little car. And again, these big ones that I've seen, who knows if it's just a big bright light and there's something behind it or part of it, it's a nuts and bolts UFO, like the real classic UFO. I don't know, but I've seen them to, to those size, to that size, small to large. What do you think it is? For me, there's three potentials, right? Of course, the one that everybody wants to hear, a lot of people in the UFO community, it's from aliens. It's from ET, somewhere from a parallel universe to out there, and they came out here in their ships, and they're sending out probes, and they're checking out everybody. I don't know about that. I mean, really, that's probably my third possibility. That's what it probably could be. Uh, my first, I think it could be something that's from here. Personally, I think it's from the planet. It's been here from day one. Um, it's, it's, I, don't, I can't say it's sentient. Um, there, there is a kind of an intelligence to it. They know that you're around. You sense, when I'll tell you the story, when I have one that was really close to me, I sense that there is a presence there. So for me, it's either being manipulated by uh, um, someone or something else, 
or it's a it's an entity in itself. But I've had contact from uh, people from the AS, ESA, the European Space Agency. Uh, he was an aerospace engineer, and I can't tell him uh, the name. He was a, he was a whistleblower. And he no longer contacts me anymore because he got his hands slapped for talking about this stuff. But there are some scientists, apparently, not from ESA or NASA or JPL, that are actually studying these spheres that are mostly observed with infrared spectrum, infrared um, cameras from up to five miles in, in the atmosphere to ground level. And he says they're not an entity in itself. He says, you couldn't explain to me what they really are, but they are collecting data from planet Earth. And he won't go into details. So they're collecting data. So that to me sounds like it could be a pro. But there's, there's so many different types. I have not seen one that was similar to the other one. Their behavior is always the same, but the colors are all different colors, different sizes, potentially composition. I've seen spherical to oval shaped, especially the larger ones. They're almost like oblong or oval. Um, but their behavior is almost identical. The way they move in the sky, just like, you know, they, they talk about, they take really sharp 90 degree turns, but they also zigzag when they, when they move really fast. They zigzag and then they disappear. They blink out. It's 110% a phenomenon. And I don't know really what it is. I've studied a lot Skinwalker Ranch. You know, the, the phenomenon there and there's a lot of that light well that that the same and it's exactly as you describe it and there's a ton of that that they saw and some of it they couldn't pick up with the naked eye but they could pick it up on on you know UV and other different spectrum so that's i find that really fascinating and 90 percent of the of the um uh, witness observations of uaps are these objects the rest are I've, I've not seen a triangle. I've not seen a, I've got a, a saucer shaped object that I picked up with a hole in the middle, but it could be a dome because it was, it was captured with an infrared and wobbling and spinning at the same time. So that could be considered a classic UFO, yeah. but I don't know what it was. How high do these generally? I usually see them coming up from up. You would think they are in orbit, but they're not. Uh, a lot of them are be, uh, below the cloud level, but like I said, from that one whistleblower uh, that, I, that contacted me for a whole year back in 2013, 2014, uh, they do come from up, up five miles up. So just in the stratosphere or mesosphere, wherever that is, and who knows how, how much further than that, maybe they're in orbit. So when you already said you don't really know what it is, but if it, it, it sounds in a way kind of like what Peter and I generally investigate, which is, you know, like ghost phenomena, That's, which is the same thing. It's something very natural. It's something very around. Do you think it's all interrelated? all this phenomenon. Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. I think there's, there's, there's definitely an affiliation there because you don't have in, in your, in your paranormal investigations, you have orbs as well. You have these spherical lights. I don't know if they're different colors, if they're translucent, what their behavior is like, because I haven't investigated and I haven't seen them, you know, in that, in that um, domain, I'm looking up in the skies, yeah. but I've had that one experience that um, it'll take just a minute to, to talk about it. This was in 2016 and I was watching TV in the side of my eye and on the 21st story floor uh, building, 21st story, um, I saw this blue light bouncing outside my window on the balcony, just bouncing. And I thought it was a key with a quadcopter, you know, a multi-rotor. And I said, oh God, I better go outside. And it was raining, it was December. Um, so I go outside and I'm going, where's this kid with the quadcopter? I'm looking down and I see this blue light. It was the size of a golf ball, 10 feet from me. I'm looking right at it. It's just a ball of light this big. And I, I, I laughed. I go, I know what it was, right? It was another orb or a spherical light. And as soon as I laughed, and I felt the presence, right? I took off zigzagging across, across the Grand Vassy Bridge, and it zigzagged as it was taken off. It took about three to four seconds to hover on top of the building, which I checked later with the rangefinder, 300 meters away. And it was a higher building, so I'd say 30 stories. And it hovered, and it was the size now of a really big beach ball. Like huge, and it was bright, bright blue. So oh, I grabbed my um, my I had a um, HD camcorder with twenty optical zoom. I lined it up, turned it on. It's got a two second turn on, so it's still hovering. And as soon as I zoomed in, I had a perfect, perfect video um, to record. And as soon as I hit record, it blinked out just like a light switch. Typical. <laughs> yeah, it's typical. And I was, but I was laughing. I go, yeah, right. You know, that, that's been, that's been my whole career of paranormal investigating. You have to spend hours like I do to get the, the glimmer, and I have captured some. But for ten years, and I spent hundreds of hours every year at night filming. I just keep on filming, and I only got a few good videos, and it, it is of the phenomena. 
But there's a lot more that I've seen, triple that, quadruple that, how many times I've seen something amazing. But they are the most amazing ones. So I think they know you're trying to film them. They don't want to be filmed for whatever reason, obviously. That's the same with, you know, ghost investigation and, and Bigfoot hunt. You know what I mean? Like all that, everything Bigfoot. you tried to do, like you just, it's always just out of camera or just out of reach. It's like, I guess, yeah, there's an intelligence to it and it knows we're paying attention. Exactly. And it's one day. <laughs> and that's why people, they go, yeah, right. If there was really a Sasquatch, if there was really UFOs, there'd be a lot more film of it. There'd be a lot more of this. Unless you've seen one first, the naked eye without a camera, and you do the investigations like we all do, either in, in your domain or in mine, we know it's real. And we know that they do evade the cameras, the camera systems and, and everything else, other devices that you use. Um, not, not 100% of the time, but 99% of the time. And so that's why we don't have that great, great uh, evidence that people are looking for either way from the Sasquatch to, and that's why I'd really like to go into Sasquatch, you know, investigation, because I hear that there are spherical lights, orbs, orange ones that are around them when they start seeing these Sasquatch. And that's why I want to get that, that evidence. If it's an infrared or if it's with the naked eye. Well, Charles, we're going to have to definitely do this again, filming our other show. We want to believe you'll have to come along. You just never know what you're going to see. And I tell you, every time I've gone out, I've always seen something, you know, to naked eye or I've captured it on film. Gosh, we've got governments around the world with millions and billions of dollars of instruments. They know what's going on. Yeah. Do they know what it is? They probably don't.